budget related issues because the finance minister is set to present a mid-year review and supplementary budget to parliament this thursday in a series of engagement we throw the spotlight on the economy and what mitigating measures must be taken to ensure a quick recovery we have two of Ghana's astute economists to help us appreciate the issues better. Welcome to the marketplace, Professor John Gachi and Professor Godfrey Brockwin. Hello, thank good you. afternoon. Good afternoon. And, Looks uh, like thank you for having me here. Great. Looks yeah. like this is a debate between the University of Ghana and University of Cape Coast. Am, Cape Coast, am I right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Prof Gachi, you want to say something about that? <laughs> I don't think so. It's just an opportunity to highlight on the the issue that we should expect. Right. So let's get into action. What is your initial assessment of the economy? Let me start with you, Prof Gachi. Well, I think it's very clear that we have um, uh, witnessed an economy that has been truncated by COVID-19. Uh, that has effect on uh, revenue mobilization. Uh, it has dwindled significantly. Uh, if we take the data from 2018 uh, to 2020 expectation, uh, you will realize that uh, revenue has gone down to about 7%. And within the same framework, uh, from 2018 to 2020, thereabout, the expectation of revenue uh, has uh, expenditure has gone up by the same margin of about seven percent. So if you if you look at revenue going down, expenditure is expanding mm. uh, as a result of containment of COVID nineteen uh, issues. So that is very clear. And then it's also very clear that we have been uh, hard hit by revenue shortfall from petroleum, and the implication is that a lot of pipeline of projects engaged by ABFA. Uh, should be affected in 2020. Uh, mm. Of course, uh, these are the, the main areas that I think uh, we can focus on for now, even though we can go specifically to sectors where productivity has gone down, joblessness has actually gotten into the picture as a result of the COVID-19. So that is the, the brief issue about uh, the introduction. Okay, uh, Prof. Boffin, let me come to you. Same question, but do you agree with what uh, Prof. Gachi said? I think uh, largely I agree. Um, it is not anybody's doing, and, and, and we are not unique in this particular uh, situation because if you look at it from the global perspective, um, you, you appreciate that um, when you look at even income per head in terms of income losses, um, 170 countries, uh, are projected to see a decline. I mean, the, the world has witnessed a recession that we haven't seen in recent times. Uh. And I think to add to what Prof. Gachi said, um, if you look at the disruption to global supply chain, if you look at the impact in terms of the elevated health expenditures that have to be done, and then again, you look at the fiscal stimulus, economic stimulus arrangement that have been put in place uh. across the entire world, that has that's going to... Uh, elevate the fiscal deficit. And for us in Ghana, we are looking at the deficit expanding to about 9.5% or approximately 10% mm. by the end of this year. And that is very, very huge. But I think that um, because of COVID-19, also when you look at it, you see that even with the Millennium Development Goals, and that the March talked about poverty reduction gains that we have made, uh, they have all been reversed, mm. largely because of COVID-19. So the impact is very, very pervasive, and I think um, it's still unfolding. If you look at since the beginning of this year, the IMF, the, the World Bank, the multilateral institutions have had to revise their forecast more than three times. Mm. That tells you how fluid the situation is. So, and we are not out of the woods yet. And the reality on the ground is that the economic hangover from COVID-19 may probably last beyond a generation. Wow, interesting. Uh, good you spoke about the revenue and then the expenditure shortfall. Prof. Gachi, let me come to you. Our total revenue projection for this year was uh, over 67 billion Ghana. So that's against an expenditure of almost um, 86 billion cities. Clearly, we are in a deficit of about 18 billion. With COVID setting in, what uh, Prof. Boffin said, how bad is this going to get for us? Well, I think the picture is very clear. Uh, that is going to worsen 
because revenue is based on productivity. Revenue is based on active supply chain engagement, and that has been disrupted hugely. And we don't know when uh, these activities will resume uh, to begin to uh, take uh, revenue from those activities. Uh, revenue from international trade engagement has actually truncated, and, and it affects the spill down effect in productive activity within the, the internal economy. So until we see resumption of a vibrant economic activity along all the chain, uh, revenue expectation will continue to dampen. Mm. And Prof, that brings us to the question, I mean, vibrant resumption of economic activities in the country. We've spoken about that, I mean, heavily dependent on importation, and then also a lot of things that we need to do internally to get the economy back on track. My question to you is, what should be the focus of the economic management team, and which sector do you think that will bring some sort of redemption going forward? I think the, uh, the framework that all countries are using is innovative management. Mm. Uh, so we need to be looking at uh, an innovative way of uh, engaging in our expenditure. Uh, it's not all the expenditure that are linked to COVID-19. Uh, some of the expenditures will have to be realigned. That mm. is about the innovation I'm talking about. There should be innovation in terms of uh, revenue generation. And that should be a priority in terms of uh, financing innovative ideas and uh, innovative engagement in our productive activities. Right. We have seen a lot of that. In fact, if there is any lesson that we learned during this short period of COVID-19 is that we have the ability to be creative. We have the ability to innovate. In fact, we have a, 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 the ability to add on. So that is what our focus should be right now as we continue to deal with this COVID-19, especially as it, it relates to economic management of our country. Mm. Probably, let me bring you, you know, same question, uh, looking at, I mean, the sectors that we have, agri sector, some have said, will be the way forward. The manufacturing sector will be the way forward. With the situation at hand now, Probably, what do you think will bring about that redemption? I think that I, I agree largely with my colleague. Uh, I think um, we have to be innovative. I think that what is becoming clear is that no country is going to have more resources now. So the question is, how do you achieve more with less? How do you ensure greater efficiency and greater value for money? Mm. So and you have all the sectors that have been impacted, and they are all competing for limited resources, particularly because we have not been able to contain the pandemic or come out of a vaccine, health spending still has to be uh, uh, catered for uh, in terms of saving lives. And then again, we have to balance that with saving livelihood also, and also cushion um, uh, the, the citizens in terms of the adverse distributional effects from COVID-19, job losses. I heard the finance minister talking about some unemployment benefits and all of that. But I think if you look at it, the question is, where do we start from? Right. And what will be the mainstay of our economy? Mm. So if we say, mm. let, let agriculture lead, that is different from saying agriculture becoming the mainstay of our economy. Um, so you are looking at the low-hanging fruits in terms of the sectors that can deliver immediate results to pushing... And which the are the low-hanging fruits for you? And, and that is where uh, perhaps agriculture is key. If you look at the effect of COVID-19 in terms of price, price development, is, is totally within our control. Mm. Even the disruption to the global supply chain and, and, and the fact that we are not getting that imported item to supplement uh, local production, we've seen the, the effect in terms of price development. So I'm expecting that we will, we will strike a good balance between meeting the expenditure drive of health and, and balance that with agriculture and link that to agribusiness. And then you can also link that to manufacturing. Uh, why, why am I saying so? If you look at Ghana, we are surrounded by neighbors who have food challenges and food um, deficit. Togo, Burkina Faso, as we speak right now, 45 million Nigerians are heading into food and nutrition crisis. That is huge investment for us. We have also signed up onto the African continental free trade. And if you look at the food import or the food deficit in Africa, it's over $35 billion. That's a huge market for us. Mm. So, and given that we have that vast expanse of land along the voter link and all of that, we could actually scale up in terms of our investment in agriculture and agri-business agri to ensure that 
we are able to take advantage of that food deficit. And this would also be helpful. That is not to suggest that agriculture will become the mainstay of our economy. Mm -hmm. But if you look at agriculture right now, that is where majority of Ghanaians derive their livelihood from. Mm. So if you're able to invest appropriately in that sector and scale up that sector's growth, then chances are that you're also improving the livelihood of majority of Ghanaians who derive their livelihood from there. Then we can't also do without ICT now. But ICT should not be looked at as a, a standalone sector. Because ICT should be diffused across all the sectors now. Mm. We are talking about ICT in education, mm -hmm. ICT in manufacturing, ICT in agriculture, ICT in agribusiness, ICT here, ICT there, and all of that. So we need to be able to scale up the, di the digital literacy of right. Ghanaians, data analytics, and then also, more importantly, link that to our educational curriculum. So mm. instead of, as a country, deciding to mainstream comprehensive sexuality, what we should mainstream in this country should be digital literacy. Right. And right hold it there for me, uh, for Bokin. I see you. Hold it right Everybody there for me. must be conversant with the ICT and, and so that we can bridge the, the digital uh, gap. All right, sure. I see you nodding, Prof. Gachi, to what Prof. was saying when he spoke about the digital um, kind of inclusion, bringing every, everybody on board, specifically with the, world, the way the world is going, with the impact of COVID and the use of digital tools. What do you think can be done, and what will you want to see in that budget that will bring some sort of hope to the digital space moving forward? Well, I think before I go to uh, that point, I do not want to take the the, the media review as a, a policy uh, uh, framework that is going to solve our problems. The idea surrounding the media review is that we had a budget in November last year, and that budget had been reviewed in March. And uh, we have engaged the managers of the economy to spend our money to actually implement those policies. They are coming to report to us as to the performance of those uh, uh, items that they have outlined to us. So mm. I do not want to present it as if it's now that we are coming to But, but some have called for a recalibration for of the, 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 the whole expenditure and the economy. Do you agree to that? That has been done. So we have mandated them to go and spend. This is the time that they are coming to account to the country. Uh, the $100 million from World Bank the COVID-19 alleviation fund, uh, the COVID-19 trust fund, and uh, all that stimulus package and the rest. This is a time that the government is coming to account to us. Uh. But I think what we are trying to say is that, for example, if you look at the educational sector, uh, we were not prepared for online teaching. And for that matter, many institutions from the lower level to the high level in the past did not have uh, the time or, or the money to invest in online infrastructure. It's an area that we need to engage seriously. Uh, if you look at data consumption, it's an area that we need to do something about data consumption that will allow for greater use of ICT to infiltrate into all the sectors of the economy. I think that is what the government should be doing. All right, and this great. should not just be a policy statement, but it should be something that should be very practical because we are going to use ICT a lot in a lot of things that we do going forward. Okay, great, and gentlemen. Uh, mm. It's it, something that we need to look at so that we can allow many more people to engage in the use of ICT to do whatever they want to do, whether in health delivery, uh, whether in pharmaceutical, etc. That is very important. Well said, gentlemen. Uh, we're running out of time, but quickly, 30 seconds each, I want to ask you, the CD has been fairly stable despite the pandemic. I'm sure you agree to that. But so, and all these, how positively will this impact on the lives of the ordinary Ghanaian? We are going into the mid-year. What will bring some hope to people? The butter and bread is important, right? Yes, it's very, very important. I think we have to be moderate with our expectations. It's media review. Uh, it's not going to be like a helicopter dropping of CDs all over the country. No. So, um, and the impact are very real. So, to some extent, I'm expecting that the minister will come up with some kind of um, stimulus arrangement mm. to cushion ordinary Ghanaians. Uh, that expectation is very high, and they have to work towards meeting that in terms of mitigating the adverse distributional effect to some extent. But mm. we can't go that far because we don't have that fiscal space to be able to do the big ticket fiscal stimulus and support 
like other advanced countries are doing. We Great. just have to cast our cloth according to the size of our cloth. Mm. But Bakun, what's the size of our cloth? <laughs> and how are we it's cutting very, it? very, very small. And, uh, and there's very little <laughs> national about the national cake. Let's right. make it a bit more national. All right, Prof Gachi, let me give you a final word, 30 seconds, please. On the city's well, performance and then reflection on, on the, on the, in the, the pockets of The global capital market is not friendly to us. The donor environment is not uh, friendly to us. So we would need to actually reshape things within the confines of our finances. Already we have actually um, uh, negatively affected the financial arrangement because of COVID-19. We shouldn't have that appetite to go even more. We should be able to contain ourselves within the framework that we have right now. Grateful for your time, gentlemen, Professor Gottfried Bocken and Professor uh, John Gatti, economist, both for your time this afternoon. We move to other stories and a 59-year-old man in Damango in